Good evening, everyone. Guys, so Reform UK have turned into vigilantes. Now, I, re I genuinely don't know where I how I feel about this. So what I'm talking about is, you guys remember the Manchester airport incident where the two gentlemen allegedly, even though we've seen video footage of it, you know what, I, it's not allegedly, the two, the one gentleman in particular, but were allegedly both the gentlemen were attacking police officers. Armed police moved in. There was a whole thing about, you know, a heavily edited video got put out on the internet. There was mass protests everywhere. You know, the Muslim community saying they're going to burn down the police. Guys, right, okay, guys, let, 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 let's backtrack a little bit. That's all allegedly, right? Because I have to be very careful about what I'm saying. But you guys know what happened in the United Kingdom. There was all sorts of wild stuff happening. There was protests. There was, you know, civil unrest. And this is one of the things that led to the the riots you know all over the country because people are seeing this and they're seeing how the police are softly softly with a certain demographic and then they're seeing how hang on a minute why are you dealing with these people like this but not with the other people so anyway let me just share this article um and rather than me waffle about it where are we i I think it's this one, although I, it might not be. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. So I've got two things I want to share with you guys. So Reform's legal action threat over Manchester Airport incident. So Reform have wrote a letter to the Home Secretary, you know, as well, Reform UK has said it would take legal action against the two men following a dis disturbance at Manchester Airport if they are, were not charged by the Crown Prosecution Service. Now, guys... Honestly, I when I saw this footage here, when I saw the heavily edited bit of this guy, of this officer kicking this guy in the head. Okay, quickly, guys, if you're watching this video, you know, if you're watching my channel for the first time, you know, I'm ex-military. I've got 24, well, probably 25 years experience now in this space. I used to teach dynamic entry to soldiers. Now, dynamic entry in the military is a lot different to when you're doing it policing but i looked at this video and this is from a military perspective i looked at that video and i thought right i genuinely don't see how that officer could explain why he decided to kick that person in the head but then when i saw the whole video i was like wow really i was and i thought right if i was teaching again i would use this as an example of when you can kick somebody in the head. Now, again, this is my opinion, my speculation. I'm not teaching anymore. This is, I, you know, things may have changed. I don't know. But what I would say is for those of you who've watched the full video, there's like a girl, I think she stood here or this might be her, or I think she stood there. She's been punched in the nose and she's dripping blood on the floor. We later found out that lady had got a broken nose. This guy here, He's, after watching the full video, he's throwing punches left, right, and center at everyone. He actually hits this officer in the back of the head while he, this officer's over here, and he's doing something to this guy, and this guy just storms in and hits him at the back of the head. What I will say, guys, in, credit, in, in fairness to this guy here who's on the floor now, he can generate a lot of power with these punches. His footwork's terrible, and, you know, if somebody could learn him footwork and, you know, a better, um, you know, better uh, better balance he would be a really competent fighter but the reality is he just got he can just generate a lot of power i've no doubt that in his uh you know in his personal life he's knocked a lot of people out with one punch anyway slightly off topic so this guy gets hit in the back of the head he's on the floor now remember these are armed police officers at an airport Earlier on that day, what you've got to take into context is there was the that preacher. I forget his name, but there was there was there was a preacher. He was arrested. Um, I think I think his name's Andrew Chowdhury, or I may be wrong with that. But he was arrested earlier on that day. Also earlier on that day, there or may, I think it was maybe a day before or something. There was the a knife attack on the you know on the gentleman with the you know on the soldier. So. All these things, you've got to put this into context. These officers have a few seconds to control this situation. What's, the, I mean, what, what is the other option here? So he's got him now, he's tased him and he's getting up. He needs to, this is my opinion, guys. This is how I'd anal analyze this situation. He's got an option now. 
he's on his own he's got limited resources he needs to control this situation so he needs to subdue this guy guys you know he needs to strike him what's the other option he's used his tears i don't know about how many rounds are in this tears but as i understand it you get one tase and then you have to reload it and again i may be wrong with that but he's used his taser and he's getting up so what's the other option he draws down on him with his pistol you can imagine what happened there so he can't strike him because he's got a, a weapon system in his hand what can he do right then this guy's getting up has this guy got a history of attacking people yes he's been attacking everyone has this guy got a history of attacking people from behind yes he's just done it under these circumstances i think and it would be my analysis that he is more than in his rights to to strike him now it's just unfortunate about the optics and that he only had his foot to do it that's my analysis guys that is my genuine analysis now this guy who attacked the remember these guys were attacking police officers first all right these police officers didn't go in there and just start tasing people and kicking people in the head there'd been an altercation involving this woman who i believe is the mum and then these guys got involved and this guy over here and then you know you guys have seen the footage but sorry that's my analysis of the uh, i should do a reaction video to the uh, video but reform are saying why have these guys not been charged why are these guys you know not behind bars and they're saying look you know we've got a situation in the united kingdom where we've got people who are facing swift justice for the protests and then you've got these two guys who 11 weeks later they've still not been arrested so reform now are going down the road of uh, let's just read you a few a few snippets um as part of the press conference earlier, reform leader Nigel Farage accused GMP, Great Manchester Police, and the CPS, Crown Prosecution Service, of perpetuating two-tier policing by not announcing charges following the incident. It's hard to disagree with that statement there. Why have these, you know, why have these two gentlemen not been arrested, at least under questioning, under caution? Why have they not been, you know, you know, why have they not been arrested and felt this swift justice like everybody else felt that went out for the protests remember these two people these two guys this guy who's on the floor and this guy they attacked police officers the police officers didn't run in there and start tasing people they were reacting to these guys going wild guys just if anybody's watching this and you don't want to get tased don't attack police officers it's that simple they're there for your protection they're there to look after you you know you know what gets me really annoyed the same people the same in fact let me come off this because i think i yeah i i uh, hang on, let me see if there's anything else yeah the, i mean the articles it, it, it says basically what i've just said but the same people who are you know the same people who are you know who don't want policing who say the police are being brutal say the police are being you know they're they're this they're that these same people are the first ones who phone the police up when they're in trouble every time i, I remember watching a video uh you guys will know what i mean it, it's called um i don't know what it is it's on social media this th 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 there's this guy he looked he looks like well when i saw it i just looked thought he looked like a scared boy um but apparently he's a gangster so this guy he 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 gets a lift somewhere in a taxi and he's calling the taxi driver uncle you know he then runs back in and he says run drive uncle drive uncle he throws him a load of money and then there's people left and right trying to get in at him they've got these like long sharp things that are made of steel keywords i'm not allowed to say you know and, and they're fighting and he phones the police he's you know he, he's on the phone to the police so this guy's like you know he's like a gangster and he wants to be gangster and, and i'm not insinuating anything guys i'm just you know generalizing you know but he phones the police and he he's on the phone to the police saying you know we whatever and when i looked at that video i i, I looked at the, the the boy at the back and I, I i didn't see a gangster i just saw a scared boy which is, you know, which is what what what, what I what I saw a scared boy. He wasn't, you know, he, he didn't look like a gangster. He genuinely looked like a scared boy. But it always shocks me that the same people who are wanting to defund the police are the same people who phone the police when they're, you know, when they're in trouble. Guys, the police are there for our safety. We need a strong police service. We need strong laws. But we also need policing that is fair. Because what we're seeing now is not fair policing. 
Nobody can, guys, please, if I'm wrong, put in the comments down below. If I'm wrong and this is fair policing and there's a legitimate reason why the Crown Prosecution Service, Great Manchester Police have waited 11 weeks and they've still not done anything, you know, let me know in the comments below. What I will say though, and again, I've got to be fair, I don't know where this precedence, I don't know where we go with this because where do we go then? Do the Labour Party, do they want to prosecute somebody and do the Labour Party start to take the law in their own hands? Do the Conservatives decide to take another politician? Do they think, right, okay, well, reform started this, uh, you know, reform have started this. So, um, do you know what? You know, um, the, the Labour Party, we're going to we're gonna do make a private prosecution on Boris Johnson for doing X, Y and Z. All right, okay. So then now the Tories are going to do a private prosecution on Keir Starmer because of X, Y, and Z. You see where we go, guys, on this. I, you know, I, I genuinely don't know how to feel. On one hand, yes, those two gentlemen who attacked the police officer, z who, who broke through the young lady's nose, the police officer's nose, those guys should be, you know, those guys should be at least charged and have a trial and have some sort of justice. And if it comes out after all the evidence has been presented that there's no charges because there was mitigating circumstances and whatever, and I, again, I don't know what it could be, but this is what would come out in a trial. And if they're found not guilty, there's nothing we can do about it. But the fact that this has not happened, clearly, I don't see how this is not two-tier policing. And guys, remember, you can't hide anything anymore. People can't hide things. Everything's out there in the open. You know, we can see this stuff on social media now. We can watch these videos and then the government, the police, whoever are trying to hide this. So, you know, I want, you know, I want a strong police service. I want a respected police service. But I also want a police service that does its job fairly. And we don't have a two-tier system. We don't have a system whereby, you know, Gentlemen can attack and break police officers' noses in Manchester Airport, and that's that, that's totally okay. That's the optics, guys. That is the optics of it. And then people who shout at police dogs or shout at police horses, they get arrested the very next day and they're in jail. How 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 is this like? How is this, guys? You guys, it's just absolutely wild. And remember, you know, a lot of this is uh, ideological subversion. A lot of this is foreign uh, countries meddling. A lot of this is, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of this is grey warfare by Iran, by China, by Russia. But guys, it's just absolutely chaos. Anyway, guys, like I said, uh, like I said before, absolute carnage. I don't know where I, what I, I genuinely don't know what I feel about this. I, I can see why reform are doing it. I think it's brilliant that they're doing it, but I don't know what precedence this opens up moving forward. I don't know if we're going to start to see political, you know, political arrests, political prosecutions by political parties. It, you know, the whole, it, it just murkies the whole water. I genuinely don't know how I feel about it, guys. Anyway, guys, I'm going to Mac to Grid and I'll get you guys another video later.